There's a belief in the high performance engine building world that piston coatings are some kind of magic solution to an improperly tuned engine. And we're here with Eric from Marley Motorsports to find out what the actual truth is with that situation. So first of all Eric, just to address that point I've just made, I think a lot of engine builders or tuners think that if we've got a thermal barrier coating on the piston crown that we can do no harm and that piston's going to survive no matter how much boost we throw at it, how lean the air fuel ratio is or how much much detonation the piston is being subjected to. Safe to say there's no truth in that. Well, I don't want to call it a band-aid at best, but it's certainly no magic bullet either. So the, the thermal barrier coatings, if they're going to block heat and you get into a situation where you're going to overheat or melt that piston, it's going to melt it through the coating. The advantage of the coating is it may buy you some time or it may delay the onset from a, from a point where you can push the engine a little harder push it even further than that and that's where you're still going to run ultimately into, into damage. So ultimately it's going to give us a little bit more margin for error, it's definitely not a band-aid for doing the job properly in terms of the tune-up but I want to really get into where the, the key benefits are with these coatings that we see applied to pistons and for a start I want to talk about the normal range of coatings that, that we do see, so can you run through what our options are there when we're looking at a fresh uh, piston, what can we apply to it? Yep, three, three main coatings, the thermal barrier that we talked on that, that you're typically going to see on the crown of the piston. Uh, the second is protection for the ring groove, primarily top ring groove, which is traditionally a hard anodized or nickel plating. We at Mali prefer the hard anodized version of that. And the uh, third is your skirt coatings. Is it safe to assume that not all of these uh, films or uh, techniques are the same between different piston manufacturers? Are there variations between what one particular piston manufacturer will use and what you're using maybe? Uh, yeah, everybody has a slightly different variation. A lot of the intent and purposes are the same. Uh, let's take skirt coatings for example. Um, you have coatings that are made to be break-in coatings, you have coatings that are made to be applied extremely thick and the coating itself is abradable so that it changes to the shape of the piston and finds its, finds its ideal thickness so to speak. And then you have coatings that are, that are applied and meant to be there for the life of the engine and you know that have either not necessarily break-in but friction reduction capability and or uh, protection against scuffing. So, on the surface, all three of those coatings on the skirt may look identical, but they have slightly different purposes and different um, intent for what, what they're going to do over the life of that piston and hence the engine. Now that skirt coating, as far as Marley is concerned, it's, it's the third of those aspects you're talking about, friction reduction, and it's a coating that should be there for the life of the piston? Yeah, absolutely. That, that's the same coating that we put in all of our OEM manufacturers. It's the same coating that we use for the very you know, uh, top race series pistons. It's the same skirt coating that we put in our shelf stock catalog, everyday average, you know, build it in your garage piston. It's the exact same formulation, exact same process for applying it. And if everything is perfect in that engine, it'll be there as long as that piston will last. The caveat is perfection is very difficult to achieve. And when it's not perfect, that's when the coating becomes um, sacrificial. So it'll take the brunt of a part that's overheated. It will, um, you know, if you get into a marginal lubrication situation, the coating becomes sacrificial rather than scuffing the piston immediately. Again, it's buying you that extra margin of safety to, to help the part survive. Now there's a couple of aspects I just want to touch on there. So you, you're obviously you're applying this coating to the skirt of the piston after the piston has been manufactured. So. Uh, Obviously there's some material thickness of build up there, does that then affect what the engine builder and machinists need to do in terms of piston to cylinder wall clearance or is it really a, a, a non-event, don't need to consider it? For the, the power pack kits that we sell, no, because that's, uh, that, or that's a function of the fact that we coat every piston that we sell, so it's designed to be coated from the beginning. So when our engineers are looking at specking out clearance on this piston, they know that coating is going to be there. We really size the piston according to the bare aluminum for what it's going to run in a cylinder. The coating is added afterwards, but we spec out all of our, our clearances over that coating. One, that's what the engine builder can measure, and two, we know that we can run slightly tighter with coatings, but because it's got that margin. So 
coating goes away, you still have the, the, the bare piston to run in with the right clearances. So it's by designing and selling the parts coated from the factory, not having to send it out and have somebody else's coating, we're able to take all that into consideration and put it in the box on the shelf with the clearance that we want the engine builder to, to set it to. So you can be confident then when you receive those parts, the clearance is what it needs to be, no need to take the, the coding into account, it just is what it is. Uh, in terms of the operation of the, that, fil that film on the piston skirt, the friction reduction, so this is something I just want to get into a little bit because uh, everything's working right, we do have an oil film essentially protecting the piston skirt from metal to metal contact on the cylinder wall. So on face value the uh, advantage seemingly of that friction reduction coating might be a little bit limited so can you talk to us about how it actually gives us that benefit? Yep there, there is some slight properties of the material that as the way that it interacts and transports oil there's some advantage and that's part of the friction reduction but the bigger factor is that the piston doesn't travel in one constant motion as it's moving up and down the cylinder it stops it changes directions every time that it stops you have that potential for metal to metal and not only does the piston stop, but it rocks and it travels back and forth in the cylinder in addition to up and down. Um, so in those circumstances, when the piston is stopping or rocking, that's where you see, or let me back up one step, as it slows down and speeds up away from those stopped positions, that's where you have mixed lubrication and that's where the real advantages are. In addition, with the coatings in that stop and rock situation, it also helps with noise. and. You know, in an all-out race motor, piston slap's not a big issue, but you start getting into more street applications and, and guys are replacing, um, you know, particularly in modern vehicles where everything is so quiet, you can't put a loose forge piston in there and, 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 and deal with that noise. And the coatings, that's another advantage that they, where they help you. Yeah, I don't, I don't think anyone building a performance engine with forged pistons wants their brand new performance engine sounding like a, like a diesel on initial startup. All right, so moving up the piston, the hard, hard anodizing for the piston ring groove. Can you tell us why that's necessary and how it's an advantage? The biggest factor of the hard anodizing is to protect against micro welding, and micro welding is is simply a result of the pressure that the 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 cylinder pressure that's forcing down on the or pushing down on the ring, forcing the ring into the bottom of the groove, and that's where sealing occurs. But at the higher temperatures um, and higher pressures, you can actually start to have localized melting of the aluminum, and the the piston ring picks up that aluminum and it starts to transfer. It, and as the ring rotates, it's dragging this molten aluminum around the part, and/or it melts and solidifies, and so it it. it you, if you see a micro welded ring, it actually has little specks of aluminum, for lack of a better term, welded to it. And then it takes those welded specks and drags it around, which completely tears up the surface of the ring groove, which is where the sealing really occurs. So the, the hard anodizing changes the structure of the aluminum by turning it into an aluminum oxide, which is much harder. And it, it protects you or gives you protection against that micro welding. Um, very, very typical in modern late model engines where the rings are very close to the top of the piston which is excellent for power but very tough on components so the the mic the hard anodizing is an alternative to allow you to to retain that ring position and at the higher temperatures and pressures so really you've just talked about moving that ring up the piston which which as you said aids power and is it a case of as you move that ring up the piston it's going to be exposed to more heat and that's why without the hard anodizing you end up with the micro welding being more prominent? The, the heat is the biggest factor that creates it but it's the combination, the heat alone won't do it, you have to have it in combination with the pressure, cylinder pressure but those two factors they, they tend to go hand in hand so with, if one's higher typically the other is as well so it's, it's protecting against both. Now off camera you did also mention that that hard anodizing coating actually uh, just after it's been applied actually provides a slightly rougher surface finish so initially it can actually have a minor reduction in the, the seal between the ring and the ring groove but that goes away over time? If you look at an anodizing under magnification, it's it's a very porous, very rough surface, uh, much more so than what you would see at the molecular level on uh, bare aluminum. So the bare aluminum groove is actually a smoother, uh, better surface for sealing than the anodizing. But um, the anodizing, the ring will condition the anodizing a little bit, so you see some changes as the engine breaks in. Very minor. Um, there's it's. 
it's possible to measure, but probably not noticeable on the average build. But it, it, it's a factor. It's a factor. All right, so we've already briefly touched on the thermal barrier coating and the fact that it's not necessarily there to, to fix a tune-up problem, but uh, the real advantage when the tune is good and everything's running well uh, is designed to reflect the heat back out of the crown of the piston back up into the combustion chamber. Can you tell us how that's an advantage in terms of engine performance? Well, being able to retain heat in, in the chamber, um, using it for work versus just having it transfer to the piston. Once, once it's transferred to the piston, it's wasted energy, wasted heat. You're not able to turn that heat into energy. Um, so there's, it opens up the tuning window a little bit, changes the tuning window. The, the other part of that is um, heat is very detrimental to the piston. Uh, by nature of aluminum material, it's, it's going to be detrimental to it. So not only are you opening that tuning window, but you're trying to protect the integrity of the piston by keeping it cool, letting, allowing it to run cooler. And allowing the piston to run cooler is a, um, is a major benefit for durability. Now, on that basis, if you're transferring less heat into the piston, does that by default mean that you can then run a slightly tighter piston to cylinder wall clearance, or is there really not that sort of correlation? At, at times, but typically no, because there's such a huge temperature differential between what happens at the top of the piston and the crown of the piston, all coatings out of the picture, that differential exists. And even once you put a coating in, it just makes that differential ever so slightly smaller, but probably not enough that you're going to affect actual piston to wall clearance at the skirt. All right, so we've talked about the, the three primary coatings there, and the, the last part I wanted to talk about there is the hard anodizing that you've got applied to that top ring groove. Uh, in some particular applications, and top fuel's the one that springs to mind, we actually see the entire piston is hard anodized. So why is that applied in top fuel, and uh, where's the advantage from that? In a case like top fuel, that's such a harsh environment on every component that, it, that you put in that engine, it's more about trying to protect and control the damage as much as it is prevent damage. So we have to make sure that we're not tearing up cylinder liners. Um, if, if the piston scuffs, we want to control it to the piston where you can take out the piston, uh, replace it, and not have to completely refresh the engine. So it's more about controlling the method of damage as much as it is prevention. There's, there's some, again, safety factor that it adds and it opens up the tuning window, but it, it doesn't prevent it, but we help kind of steer what's happening with, with a coating like that in that application. And obviously top fuel's a, a pretty extreme application where the engines are being torn down and a lot of the components are being replaced after every single pass. Uh, what I'm interested in, because we get asked about this a little bit, is uh, would hard anodizing of the entire piston be a technique that would be even remotely applicable to a road car piston or a circuit racing piston? It could, and there's, there's examples out there where it is done, but in, in my opinion, um, you know, particularly looking at what happens on the skirts. We just touched on some surface roughness issues. Why not use a coating that's made to make the skirt smoother, to aid in friction, and, and a little more forgiving on cylinder walls, basically putting the right coating in the application or right places when it's available. Look, it's been really interesting, Eric. Uh, hopefully everyone watching now has a little bit more insight into those coatings, what they can do what they can't do and how to choose the right coatings for their application. If people want to learn more, how can they reach out? Uh, best, play, best place to start is the website, mollymotorsports.com. It has all our contact information. We've got some additional um, you know, tech-oriented videos, technology-oriented videos that touch on a few aspects like that. And if nothing else, it, it uh, puts you in direct contact to us where we'll be happy to talk about it with anybody that's got questions. Perfect. Thanks for the chat, Eric. No problem. Thank you. If you like that video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, and if you're not already a subscriber, make sure you're subscribed. We release a new video every week. And if you like free stuff, we've got a great deal for you. Click the link in the description to claim your free spot to our next live lesson.